was a, a tragic day for the Texas Department of Public Safety. The um, uh, I have with me right now our regional director, A. Gerald ba Brown. Uh, he is going to come up and then offer a few remarks, um, and then we'll give more details about what happened. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Regional Director Gerald Brown. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. Um, this is such a tragic event. Sometime this morning around 11 or 1030 time frame, we had an 18 wheel that ran through our driver's license slash highway patrol office, which is directly across the street from here. Yes, ma'am. So we had, a, we had an 18 wheeler that ran into our, through our driver's license office that's directly across the street from here. What we know is that we had several people injured as a result of this accident, as a result of this incident. Um, the driver was, was being followed. He had stolen an 18 wheeler earlier. Justin's gonna get into all that, so I won't get into those details. And he was being, being chased by a, a deputy and he ran into our building. We have several people that were injured and, and one is deceased at this time. Again, Justin will get into all those. This is a tragic day for us. Tragic day, my heart and, and goes out, my heart and prayers goes out to the family members of those that are injured as well as those that are injured. We have multiple agencies that are here that are assisting to include Washington County, Brenham PD, the FBI, and as well as all the resources that we have with the Texas DPS. So we have the Texas Rangers, the Texas Highway Patrol, and the Criminal Investigation Division. So I'll step back and let, I'll step back and let Justin, uh, Sergeant Ruiz come up and give you guys the details. Thank you all for being here. Really, really, really appreciate y'all. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is a sad day for DPS and for all the people that were involved, uh, all the customers that we had in our building today. Uh, for today's incident. Uh, a Washington County Sheriff's Deputy and other law enforcement were behind this 18-wheeler. Uh, it was reported stolen. Uh, when they saw the vehicle, it was on State Highway 36 over here on this side of 290 by the McDonald's. The driver fled from law enforcement and came here on, on 290 going westbound, took the, uh, the feeder loop under 290, the main highway, uh, and went east back on 290 feeder. Uh, the st stolen 18-wheeler took a hard right turn and went into the DPS Brenham office. The suspect is Clintard Parker, who is 42, from Chapel Hill. Parker was taken into custody and taken to the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Parker was taken, or Parker did come to the DPS uh, Burnham office yesterday at approximately 3 or 4 p.m. where he was denied his commercial driver license. He then, uh, while he was there, the driver's license staff advised Parker that he was not eligible to uh, renew his commercial driver's license. Two people were flown to CHI St. Joseph's and Bryan. One person was flown to Memorial Hermann Hospital in Houston. Three were transported to Scott and White here in Brenham and have been released, and eight were treated and released on the scene of the incident. Unfortunately, one person has succumbed to their injuries and died at the hospital. Criminal, the, this is a criminal investigation that is being led by the Texas Rangers. Parker is facing multiple felony offenses, and Victim Support Services for DPS is on the scene at the Family Reunification, which is at the Brenham Police Department. Any questions? That's all under investigation. His name is going to be Clinard Parker. C L E N A R D Parker. Does he have previous charges? That's under investigation. Can you talk to us about the deceased person? Which hospital did he or she die at? If you know the approximate age and male, female. We're, we're not going to release that information right now because it's still uh, very fresh. And so family notification still has to be made. Was that person a state employee? That's, we're, that's under investigation. How many people total were state employees and how many were? So we, all we have right now is 14 total individuals. Uh, that's all under investigation. Still very active. Can you repeat your question? No, there is no resist. He was taken out of the 18-wheeler and taken into custody by several officers. When he was denied that video, were there any threats to his return and were there any precautions taken maybe at the office? 
that's still under investigation. We're, we're pulling all the information that we can. You're, that's all going to be released through a public information request. Why would he deny the CDL? That's all under investigation. You don't know why he was no, we're still trying to get all that information. It's very fresh, so we're still trying to get as much information as we can. Do you know approximately how many people were actually inside the building or in the ground? That was going to be the 14 people. Just the four, so all 14 people were injured, or 13 injured and one deceased were totality of people who were yes, inside? Yes, all the people inside. Were there people in there who were uh, not injured or were just present? So the, the, the eight that I said that got checked on scene, uh, that was everybody that was still there that didn't want to go to the hospital. So that's going to include all all the people that were there. And are this the eighteen wheeler? What's that? Who owns it? We're, we're we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, the eighteen wheeler looks like it went into the building, did drive out and grab it back in, or why is the eighteen wheeler out? Yeah, he he went into the vehicle or went into the building and did come back out. But did he drive the building? We can see the entrance. What what is what is the construction? What is it? That is the front door where the driver's license office is at. I'm not, it's un, unsure right now. We're still trying to figure all that out. And so that, that front door, that front door, I saw that there's, that's a waiting area where people who are, you know, waiting for the driver's Correct. license and that kind of Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's what the, the waiting area and where the driver's license uh, desk are at. Gotcha. So were any, were any officers, just trying to get an idea of exactly how far into the building Correct. did the truck make it inside? Did it make it past the lobby in the office area? Of where that's all still under investigation. There are, there are several offices behind uh, that driver's license waiting area. So we're still trying to figure all that out. So the driver into the building? The suspect did not suffer any injuries. So there were 14 people, just to clarify, 14 people total. 14 total. Eight people checked out, one person deceased, everybody else went to the hospital. Everybody went to hospitals, deceased. yes. Okay. And then of the 14, how many were civilians and how many were soldiers? We're still trying to figure all that out. Now, did he drive out of the building to help the police? What's that? Who had access to that city again? Where is it? Washington County Sheriff's Department. That's, he's in jail over there. And did he drive by himself out of the building, or is that the unit? That's something we're... Two more questions. We have time for two more questions. We're still trying to figure all that out. Let's go here. He doesn't have Sergeant, could this be considered an act of domestic terrorism and unrelated police and federal investigation? We have all our all assets on scene and trying to figure all that out together. Uh, like, I said, like I said, this is it's still very active and ongoing, so I can't release that information right now. Can you give us a sense the threat level was already at a heightened level just in recent time because of the the climate, if you will. Uh, can you give us a sense of, of where that will be moving forward in terms of the other government officers and law well, What I can say today is that this area is safe. Uh, we've got the, the suspect in custody, and we're all out here trying to get the, the scene uh, all fixed up and, and taken care of. Does the building have to be closed down, or are you guys aware, like, structurally, if the, the building could reopen anytime soon or move the services temporarily? Where are you guys at? So we'll... The building is not going to be usable at this point, right? So it's going to be shut down for a little while. For all of our customers that are in, that has appointments and plan to come here for a driver's license, please go to our DPS website to see where where when when you can where you can go to get a driver's license. So what what we can tell you right now is what we've already told you. This is a this is an active investigation, and as soon as we know more, we will surely share it with you. We want to be transparent with you, and as soon as we are able to show any videos, any of those things of that nature. We will, through our public information office, you can get that information. But as of right now, it's an active investigation. So that's going to be all the questions. We're going to allow the senator to come up. You want to come and introduce the senator? Right. Can you give us his date of birth, though, real quick? Um, I think he gave that to you already. I must have. I'm sorry. Um, I, I think it, yeah. You didn't give it? Give, give, give it to me. 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 Give it to of 1981, July 16th of 1981. That's last question. Hey, this is a, uh, a tragic day and it's affected a whole lot of people. Obviously this investigation is just in its infancy right now, so we have a lot of questions that we're working to get answers, which is the reason why all these resources are here. But we're blessed to have with us what the senator for, Texas senator for this area, Lewis Colcourt, and we want to give her an opportunity to talk about this tragedy. I first want to say um, to everyone that uh, we need to pray for the victims. And now that we have lost someone in this tragedy, please pray for their families. Uh, this is a day that 
you don't think it's going to happen. That office right there um, is something known to the mayor and I and everyone in Brenham. We've taken our children to get their driver's license there. Uh, I've gotten my driver's license there. It's a place of public service. And so uh, what we've seen today was an act of violence. And I want to first thank all the first responders, the deputy sheriff that uh, realized that was a stolen truck, uh, those that got on the scene quickly to keep uh, more damage from being done, as I understand. I want to thank DPS and all of our servants. Today we are reminded that those that serve us in public, it's a dangerous job. Someone that goes to work today to issue driver's license can literally trigger someone to create an act of violence like the one that we see across the street. And so I want to thank all of our first responders that were on the scene today helping those victims. I want to thank uh, all of the law enforcement for their quick reaction. And again, pray uh, for those victims that have been hurt in ways we're blessed that more weren't injured in this act of violence. And then finally, I want to say that we will prosecute this person to the full extent of the law because this will not be tolerated, not in my hometown and not in our home state. So uh, again, thank you to all those that responded. Join us in prayers for the victims and we will be tough on this crime. Thank you. I'd now like to bring up the mayor for the city of Brenham for some remarks. Thank you. Well, I'm not going to repeat everything that's... I'm sorry. Mayor Adwood Kinjur, um, mayor for the city of Brenham here. It's unfortunate that we are here gathered for a uh, really senseless tragedy. And um, we just found out, or I just found out the same time you did about the deceased. And uh, that's not the kind of news we wanted to hear today. Our prayers are with those who are still in critical care. I want to say thanks to our first responders. Uh, had it not been for their quick action, uh, as you can see across the street, the uh, suspect was backing the vehicle up and with the intent of going into it again. Our fire chief mentioned that if he had veered a little bit to the left the second time, there would have been a collapse of that building, which would have resulted in a lot more injuries and possible death. So again, thanks to our first responders. I can't say enough for them. They put their life on the line. And again, keep your prayers for those who are in the critical care now. Thank you very much. We will continue to keep everyone updated on our social media channels, on our Twitter and Facebook channels. Um, the investigators continue to work tirelessly behind us, and that will be going on for several hours. Uh, that's all we have for right now. Thank you.